one of the biggest investments, biggest infrastructure investments ever in India is uh, probably the dedicated freight corridor, which fits into the whole plan of lowering costs, even moving goods from road to rail that you also mentioned, and uh, which is also good as, as a country in, in a climate action uh, perspective. Are there some further, you know, critical areas related to the dedicated freight corridor that can further expedite and uh, this intent uh, of lowering logistics costs and integrating more into global value chains? You're absolutely right. I mean, DFCs, uh, whether it is Western or Eastern DFCs, is again going to change the landscape, the way the goods are moving in this country. We have yeah. the capacity constraints when it comes to the existing rail network and more and more pressure will be on this existing network because people are now traveling a lot and it will continue to happen. Uh, unlike in the past when where there used to be economic activity only in, in the limited regions, today the government is making conscious effort to make sure that this activity is actually spread across the country. So when that happens, obviously the the people will move from place A to place B, either for their work or for their better opportunities. Yeah. So when that happens, obviously we need a separate corridor which can handle the freight because freight is also growing and it will grow further because we are talking about made for the, make for the world, etc, etc, which yes. means there's going to be additional freight that we will need to carry. Now, therefore, a dedicated freight corridor is absolutely essential and the fact that it's already rolled out and we are seeing Western freight corridors probably nearing completion and very soon uh, we should be able to see trains moving on that. Uh, Eastern, however, we know uh, it is take some time. Uh, but I think the critical success factors for both freight corridors are going to be the spokes because ultimately the cargo is also going to come from the hinterland region. Yes. It's not going to come only along the dedicated freight corridor. Of course, with the dedicated freight corridor, we have Delhi Mumbai Industrial Corridor, etc. Et coming up that will generate a lot of cargo. But having said that, the entire two cities which are currently growing and they'll continue to grow are definitely going to generate more volumes. And when you're seeing these tier two cities and the port locations, which are again going to be a little away from the dedicated freight corridors, they're going to be 100, 150 kilometers from the freight corridors. Yes. Then these spokes become very critical. So while we are doing the freight corridor alignment and the work is, is going fast, I think it is also essential to make sure that these spokes are also equally capable of handling those volumes. They are also built to those capacities. Wherever those capacities are there, those capacities need to be utilized before we look at yeah. creating another uh, you know, infrastructure or another yeah. spoke uh, arrangement. So I think this is going to be the key success factor. One, ensuring that the DMIC, which is supposed to complement uh, DFCs, uh, are implemented and, and the people are able to start their manufacturing in those areas, in those new industrial clusters, both on the eastern and the western corridor. And at the same time, ensuring that these spokes that will play a critical role because the last mile will happen through them only. Yeah. DFCs exactly. are going to move cargo from point A to point B and along the alignment, whatever, wherever you have those uh, MMLPs, uh, they will add to those volumes, but yeah. still a large volume that has to flow either to or from the hinterland. And for that, these DFCs are going to be very, very critical and the spokes are going to be very, very important. Yeah. Yeah, I know you highlight a very important aspect. I mean, the DFC is only one element, one part, one chain link in, in, in the full supply chain. Yeah, And 